What was the craziest thing you saw traveling, Indy, over that time period? Give me one, mm. like one story. <laughs> craziest <one> thing. Story. <laughs> I'll tell you the craziest thing I did. One of the craziest things I did, um, which I look back on it now. If my kids ever did this or anyone I know, I'd be, um, <laughs> uh, I'd be like uh, telling them off. But um, you know, if you've seen that Top Gear episode where the uh, back when Jeremy Clarkson was host and when they went to um, Vietnam. And they drove across Vietnam on motorbikes, basically, yes. on, on scooters. Um, me and my mates, we saw that and decided we'd do that. Um, you thought so it was a great went, idea, innit? Yeah, it went to a great idea. We we, we drove, <laughs> I'm sorry, we flew to Vietnam. We were, I think we were up in Hanoi, Hanoi, Hanoi yeah. up in the north, and we thought we'll, go, we'll, we'll, we'll drive down to basically Saigon. Um, mm. That's a lengthy that's journey, and those roads ain't safe. They're not safe. And then uh, we so basically got there, bought some motorbikes. I should add that I actually don't have a motorbike license here in the UK. You don't so need to. All they don't do need is, it you know, no, what they, all they do is they say, right, here's a bike. Drive up and down. Yeah. Can you stop? Can you go? Okay, <laughs> pass, you go. Pass, That's, it. Pass. That's and, it. And I've heard people break their legs and shit like on a bike and no yeah. one cares. Just, so, so, oh. so, I mean, I could do a twist and go scooter. When I was in Thailand, lived there, you know, you drive around. Again, it was like that. They're like, you twist it, you go forward, and you press the brake, and it stops. And they're like, you figure the rest out as you go along. <laughs> you know, it was okay. This time around, I bought actual motorbike, a manual motorbike with a clutch and everything. And Jazz, but you'll appreciate this. I YouTubed it, you know, had, you know, had to change yes. the gear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. the gear. So when I bought the bike, I said to the guy, he, I, I just, I'll just double check. I was like, where's the clutch? And just, you know, show me. And he was kind of like, you just bought the uh-huh. motorbike. But you don't know. I was like, I, I, it's I like, YouTube. you know, in between us. In yeah. between us. <laughs> I, was like, I clocked it, mate. I watched the video. I could do this. No problem. My, my dad, didn't um, it? My dad. <laughs> so basically, yeah, a couple of us who drove across Vietnam. Crazy, crazy, crazy um, thing to do. Be- amazing mm. experience. You know, things mm. like there was this, uh, this this drink you have with a, a snake heart in it um, oh, along God. the way. Uh, yeah, all kinds of silly, silly, silliness. But yeah, then yeah. at one point, I think I, I nearly had an accident because, uh, you know, the roads are unsafe. It goes, yeah, they're, they're, they're mad. Um, Tarmac road to this broken dirt road like yeah. that. Mm. Um, one point at night, and that happened. Um, I nearly came off my bike, and I literally ju- I was doing flip flops and shorts as well. So obviously, yeah, you know, yeah. no safety. You're uh, not supposed to wear flip flops on a motorbike. You're supposed to wear normal shoes in case yeah. you come off. And uh, like I jumped, leather and stuff. <laughs> I, I wasn't going too fast, maybe 30, 40 kilometers an hour, probably about forty kilometers an hour. And then um, the bikes are wobbling. I knew I was about to come off. I just jumped up in the air. Um, to let go of the bike and just landed running and the bike just skid in front of me and then uh, landed running I I love yeah it, it was uh, in flip flops oh in flip flops and stopped and I, my heart was pounding yeah. pounding I turned around and everyone else behind me had stopped and were looking at me like is someone filming you this or, 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 yeah. how are you alive I was, yeah, I was just <laughs> Tom like, Cruise I was thinking to myself how have I just you know someone's looking up at me someone's you know someone's looking out for me uh, I felt so blessed, but that was a, a very dangerous. Did you wear uh, shoes afterwards? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> very I, good, I went very to, good. I went I'm, to I'm glad you learned shoes, something sl- from that experience. Gear. Yeah, yeah. But I've got many. I've, there's many stories um, <laughs> that I've got. I just don't know where to begin. <laughs> that was one. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be in the book. <laughs> that sounds. That I sounds learned from my trolls. <laughs> yeah, I'd have been. I'd have been worried if you hadn't gone on the motorbike. I didn't because I was like. Nah, I can't. I can't risk dying. <laughs> but I think um, our our travel guy he kept on putting the fear in us, saying like, "Yeah, this happened to that person. This happened to that person." And I'm like, "You're not selling this to me, buddy. I don't want to get yeah, on yeah. one now." Yeah, it's, it's you know what? It's common. Man. When I was in Thailand, I was there longer. I got to see a lot of the accidents. Most of the accidents happen because either people are getting really confident in the driving, or number two, yeah. overconfident. Generally, an animal comes on the road and they they're not used to. Ooh. You know, in the UK, we're used to light traffic lights, everything order. Most <laughs> developing countries are a bit more chaos, right? So you have yeah, to just have your general awareness has to be heightened to a much greater level, mm. and you're not yeah. necessarily programmed to think about oh, I've seen a chicken run across the road, or a pig, or a wild dog, or something. And generally, that happens. And, and um, a lot of them don't move, FYI. Like, you think they'd run off. No, no, they just stay there. They're like, yo, I, I run this shit. That's it. it. Like, yeah, I'm in the road now. What, what it's a think classic, you classic Mexican standoff. They know they've been through this. They're like, this is not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, you're new here, mate. Right? <laughs> yeah, you don't know the, you don't know the school. <laughs> yeah, you, you, no, one, no one understands that properly. Um, where was your favorite place when you weren't traveling? You know, my favorite place... Um, 
My favorite country is Japan. So I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I never, I can never give a Siddha answer. So my, it's my favorite country is Japan mm-hmm. purely because the culture, the food, their identity, you know, they're one of the yeah. only nations in that part of the world um, that haven't mm-hmm. been colonized. Obviously, historically, they were the colonizer. Yeah. So that means as a, as, a, as a developed economy, developed country, they've developed um, without much external influence through colonization, right? So they've got their own way of doing things, their own, you know, own ways of living, different perspectives, mm. ways of life, which is amazing. Like one, one, you know, one amazing, you know, fact about the Japanese population and community, especially in Tokyo, for example, when I realized there's actually no, there's no trash cans in the pub, in public, hardly as you don't need it. Because people see that to see as you know their waste is their own responsibility and the personal responsibility, personal mm. responsibility for their waste. So they take, and then that's one beautiful example of that culture. Yeah. I think, you know what? If only everyone adopted this kind of mindset. But value, I mean, that value across the mass. That's yeah. Crazy. People that that became a massive story at the World Cup. I think it was where their team played and their fans cleaned up the stadium before they left. Because that's, that's that's what they do, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, why would you do that?" And I'm like, "Because that's their culture. That's that's what they do at home." Why wouldn't you do that? That should be the question. Right? No, it's true. Why <laughs> wouldn't you do that? But then normally yeah. it's like one person thinks it, not the whole half of that country's team support does yeah. it. Right? That's, yeah. that's, that's that's different mm-hmm. levels. And and it's just it's just that pride they take it themselves. And so and then I love arcade subculture. Um, you know, um, you know, anime, Pokemon, all that kind of stuff. Yes. So for me, the geeky side Big of me, day. it feeds Dragon Ball Z. That. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I visited one beautiful thing about Japan is they've got, you know, um, thousands of temples all around uh, the yeah. country. And if anyone ever goes, you know, you can get this ticket to this bullet train that goes all around the country. So you get one ticket that allows you for a certain period of time just to travel around the country. So it's really easy to get around. And they've wow. got temples in all these kind of rural parts and forests and, you know, you've got some beautiful scenery. You've got to walk there. So sometimes some of these are like half a day treks, full day treks to get some of these temples. And when you get there, mm. There's someone that will sign a book with, for you in terms of a calligraphy piece that symbolizes um, that particular temple. So actually, people have these oh. books and they collect these kind of stamps or calligraphy pieces from all the temples they visit. Wow. Um, and, and that kind of concept, and you see where that concept from Pokemon has come from. It's that kind yeah, of yeah. That was the first collecting. ever sticker book. Let's yeah. let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, and, so I've got these beautiful books somewhere at home of all the temples we visited. So there's a lot of walking, a lot of hiking. So people think Japan is this high tech um, yeah. country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's some That's only in the cities, man. You know, beautiful, beautiful scenic places. That's my favorite country. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been to was in the Amazon basin in um, South America, the tri-border between Chile, uh, Brazil, no, Chile, Bolivia, Argentina, I think from memory. I've got that wrong. Um, but it took a few days to get to this place. Um, mm. we, uh, back then, 10 years ago, it's a lonely planet guide, but it was, it was like, you know, you go to this village um, and there's potentially tours by local people into the Amazon basin, but we have no further information on this <laughs> it's a rural village. So when we got, me and my friend got there, we took a, we had to take a boat um, with cattle. So there were cows on there, we had these little hammocks there. We, we took oh two days God. by boat to get to this village. They had never seen brown people. So when we got there, the kids were just running behind us, like, who are these two aliens? Where they've come from? Yeah. 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 And then we took took us two three days to get um, by a small little canoe boat. So me and my friend there, all our food supplies, Barney, our food that we're going to take with us in this little canoe boat, going through into the into, into the Amazon basin basically. And that took two days, literally five days to get to this place. And I remember looking up at the sky at that point um, at night, and obviously there's insects everywhere. There's no natural light, and I saw so I never seen as many stars in the sky as I had it until that moment. Um, mm. Obviously, you're in somewhere where there's not much civilization. No light at all. No light pollution. Mm. Um, the sky, everywhere, everything around me was lit up from the stars in the sky. Mm. And to me, wow. at that point, I still remember that point, and still, you know, you know, I've got the vivid image in my mind. It was one of the most... It chips you out, doesn't it? You're like, and beautiful what? moments. Um, so for me, that's probably the most beautiful spot there. And we ended up doing some prana fishing and saw these pink nosed dolphins, which are very, very rare. So we were like, you know, in the middle of it. But it was um, it was also a tough journey because uh, one other crazy mm-hmm. story, but I'll stop here, was wow. on the first day and I was with my, one of my university friends. And we were on that boat and I talked about that little, that little kind of canoe mm-hmm. boat, two of us there. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we were going through, we went to some low hanging branches. And he's wearing a cap, and his name's Jas. And he, uh, uh, Jas was like, "Indeed, there's something on my head." And I'm sitting up in front of him, the canoe, and I turn around, and on his on his head there was a tarantula. 
Oh my god. Just sitting god. on his head. Big, big and, one. Yeah, oh. massive tarantula. Like, like you, you'd see god. it in a zoo or something, right? And I turn around, and by the way, Jack, he is actually, um, you know, really scared of spiders. Like, he's got the phobia, <laughs> a major phobia. And he's a, All right, the phobia, and he, yeah. Me, yeah, me, yeah, he has literally. And he, me and him are quite similar in that laissez faire attitude. He's like, if I go into it, I'll get over it. You know, I'll go into it and surround myself with it. Mm. And I, I saw his face. And obviously, I think he realized when he saw my face that there's something. What was there. the something there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as soon as he saw my face, I didn't have to say anything. He was like, oh my God. And went like that. And, and obviously, threw his hat off. And then this tranquil is on the, in, in our canoe. And there's not much space. It's like, you know, you're on that. It's tiny. Yeah, line, yeah, yeah. Line, it's really tight together. Up. You're like, you know, you're there. <laughs> And it's, on, it's, it's running past me on the side. And even I'm freaking out because I'm like, this is huge. And I, I, look, I got my oar and then I kind of flicked it out. And, you know, again, you know, someone's looking over me. But <laughs> first, first flick went straight out, despite that, oh, went straight God. out into the water. And another another thing that I lost in learned that day was when we flicked it out, I thought I, I might drown or something. It just walked along the water. It walked along the river back onto the bank. <laughs> What the fuck? No way. <laughs> you found Michael some alien Jackson spider. out there, man. <laughs> yeah, man, that was, uh, that, that that's was, uh, alien that was day shit. one. Day one on the canoe, and I think... Um, if that bit you guys, you'd be fucked, because you're in the middle of a, of a river, that's it, it's done. Middle of nowhere, yeah. We were thinking that, like, at night, there was someone with a... With a because there were pan... I think there were pumas there, sorry. There was someone with, like, a machine gun at night outside, uh, outside uh, where we were <laughs> sleeping at night as we were going along, because obviously, you know, you had... Try trying to scare away the animals. Yeah, just in case. Well, if it just attacked in case, you, you, just in yeah, case yeah. you get attacked by that by by a predator like that. Hang on. So is he shooting to keep it away, or is he shooting because he sees one? If if, it if he sees one. Oh yeah, if they're not shooting just all night long in the yeah. area. <laughs> 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 Rambo, that, that Rambo. Night sleep, you're sitting there thinking like, if it's not if it's not gunshots, I ain't sleeping tonight, boys, because he's yeah, dead, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where you know you go, when you're going to sleep and knowing that outside it, you know this it just you just yeah. you don't you sleep you don't sleep man yeah. but, but, you, you take know, you take watch that's what you do too tired take, I'll stay awake um, <laughs> yeah yeah you stay but awake I will sleep it's liberating because when you get home and you're like my biggest problem is there's this tiny little thing in the corner this little spider thing it's nothing, now, when, it, it's when you come back to base like that you're like look this can't even it's not gonna hurt me you know, be. so at least it's liberating that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, true. Really that's true. true. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, when you went to Japan, was the language barrier difficult, or was it okay to work with? In in, in the in the main cities, not too challenging because I think okay. uh, people are quite accommodating. Uh, some of the signs are in English, so it is you know you're still going to be immersed. It's very different because uh, the you know, the characters mm-hmm. and the alphabet, everything is completely different. When you go to the rural parts, it's a bit a bit more challenging, most definitely. Uh, but you know you'll stick out. People know you're not. You know from japan you're not from there <laughs> yeah so you'll get that you'll get that help but you know for anyone who's thinking about it i think you know mm-hmm. looking at the bullet train route and trying to get that ticket that lets you go around the whole country is a great starting point it's so i wouldn't way. let that language barrier put you off um in terms of going somewhere like that so did i guess this kind of leads into go on, go on, go on, go on. no final japan question did you meet any samurai there's immediately several. Well, you know what? Some images of being having uh, dressed up as a samurai because obviously it's, oh. uh, it's an ancient, um, you know, there, there are some practicing samurai, it's ancient practice, so there aren't as many. But yeah. there were a couple of individuals who I met who were trained in the art and we've done some lessons with them as well. Wow. Uh, just to get an idea. With, again, with like Shuster. No, no, not with Shasta. That's like, you know, you know how you got to start with... Like, you know, they the, the they give you Kendo one. sticks, man, first. They ain't giving you no Shasta <laughs> straight away. Yeah, yeah. Are you mad? Listen, you must have done Gutsuka as a kid. I'm yeah? going to go you there. You have as a kid. They give you these little sortia. They don't give you the that's real thing. I, uh, that, that, but you know what? Yeah, Everything asks me that question. It's a singer. We brought back any trust. Of course they did. Of course they did. No, because listen, we all watched Last Samurai. We always kill Bill. We go there and we're like... Uh, what's it, what do they call it in Japanese? Katana. Katana is the word, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the sword. Yeah. You're like, I need, I need the big shasta, I need the shorty shasta. I mean, we, you, you probably they're like, Sata Kul Karpan Hegi, a shorty shasta, Hegi, a shorty shasta. Yeah, I mean, it's just, oh, Samurai are cool, man. It's, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. We were supposed, actually, we were supposed to go next year for Mama's 50th birthday. I think Japan's actually closed at the moment for all people coming in. But should mm-hmm. it open, I will speak to you before when we're in the planning phase. Uh, definitely, buddy. Definitely. Yeah. Good choice.